All right, you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is not gonna be football related. It's not gonna be sport related. What well, might be, actually. I'm not, a, I'm not completely sure. It's called 10 people who instantly regretted their decisions. And it sounds really interesting. It sounds like something I'd wanna watch and it sounds like something I'd love to react to. We've got a picture of a woman being dangled off the edge of a cliff by a man for what seems like a photo opportunity. She did it for the gram, and she instantly regretted her decision. Let's find out exactly what happened, guys. Let's do this. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... Check out Major Key Physiques for the best in sports apparel and workout accessories. They have free shipping worldwide for all orders over $150. Use discount code JACOB10 for an extra 10% off. Enjoy the video, and I'll see you there. When it comes to risk, most of us live pretty straightforward vanilla lifestyles. Then there is that small group of people who just can't live without pushing the limits and taking risks. Such people seemingly need to undertake activities that would make the rest of us break out in a cold sweat. Whether climbing buildings with no safety gear, dropping yeah, from great that. altitudes without a parachute, or balance- Whenever I first saw this, it's like, it's heights. It's heights. Anything with heights, anything without safety equipment that's high above the ground is like, nuts. Nah on a wire thousands of feet in the air, these people love undertaking some pretty extreme stunts. Andy Lewis. An all-around extreme athlete and thrill seeker, you'll find Andy Lewis wherever extreme balance and concentration is required. He is best known for his slacklining, often high up. One stunt involved walking a line at the Lost Arrow Spire in Yosemite, naked and with no safety gear. Not done there, Lewis upped the ante by walking between two hot air balloons over 1.2 kilometers That's insane. Track. They say no safety gear, but obviously they've got a little carabiner there, right? So if they do fall off, they're not falling to their death. Right? Are they going to show me something where this guy instantly regrets his decision? What the hell happened? Given most crossings occur between two solid and stationary objects, we'll agree the hot air balloon walk is pretty damn impressive. Oh my god. Wim Hof. Dutch climber Wim Hof isn't your usual extreme thrill seeker. In addition to not using any equipment, the man known as the Iceman doesn't really use that much in the way of clothing either. Wearing only shorts, he's climbed past the 7,500 meter death zone of Mount Everest and even scaled Mount Everest. Only Kilimanjaro. shorts? How is this possible? Well, apparently, he is really good at controlling his breathing and body functions, which is why he can take on mountains with no special gear or oxygen. Freddy Knock. Mate, excuse me. Excuse me, this video has not been titled correctly whatsoever. 10 people who instantly regretted their decisions. Let me see the dislike ratio. Yeah, 9.1k likes, 7.3k dislikes. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Oh well, let's keep going. As we all know, tightrope walkers are a special breed of thrill seeker. Often high above the ground with no safety gear, a small rush of wind could send them to their death with no warning. Freddie Knock doesn't seem to care about that. In 2011, with absolutely no safety gear, the 45-year-old walked down the cable used for cable cars near the Swiss town of St. Moritz. Hundreds of feet above jagged rocks and ice, he walked for over 1.5 kilometers okay. without a slip. So this guy doesn't have any safety equipment. He walked for 1.5 kilometers <laughs> along a tightrope like that. Like, not only physically would that take a toll, but mentally. Oh my god, to concentrate like that for a K and a half. But what, he, he didn't regret his decision. Like, what, what the fuck is this title? Certain niche. When you think of daredevils, a lot of people don't think of water. That's where Herbert Nitsch comes in. The Austrian is a pilot by profession, but he's made his name under the waves. You see, Nitsch likes to dive really deep and all using just one breath. Now that is scary shit. Free diving? First he amazed mm. onlookers when he dove to a depth of 214 meters. Not done there, in 2012, he went over 250 meters down with the help of a special sled. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh the God. one blemish on otherwise- 250 meters below the surface. Wouldn't that be completely black? Holy shit, that would be the scariest thing ever. Nah, no way. The spectacular dive was that Nitch required oxygen just 10 meters from the surface after running into some trouble. Elaine Robert. 
If you're afraid of heights, look away now. There's a reason Elaine Robert is dubbed Spider-Man. This guy will climb anything, including the massive Burj Khalifa in Dubai. In 2011, the French climber and daredevil started at the bottom of the 2,717-foot-tall structure and worked his way to the very top. What? As officials didn't want a bloody mess should he fall, Robert was forced to climb while using a harness and rope as a safety precaution. Fucking hell. I was gonna say. <laughs> when you're an extreme sports base jumper, you'll throw yourself off of anything. Just ask Valery Rozov. The Russian jumper leapt from the north face of Mount Everest in 2013 to mark 60 years since the mountain was conquered by Sir Edmund Hillary. In freezing conditions in the thin air, Rozov's jump took place at an altitude of over 7,000 meters. In fact, the air is so thin that his wingsuit didn't begin to work until after a few seconds into the oh rainfall. Oh my gosh. Gary Connor. Wow. Can you imagine that ride down from 7,000 meters? Oh my god. That would, like... That wouldn't be just a normal skydive, that would be like minutes. Would it be minutes? No, it wouldn't be minutes, would it? It'd probably be a minute. Maybe two minutes at, at, at the most, but fucking hell, that would be intense. <sighs> Speaking of wingsuit jumpers, Gary Connery might not have dropped from a great altitude, but he did make a big statement with the landing. What did he do? Hundreds of skydives and base jumps under his belt, falling doesn't really seem to concern the British stuntmen. But what about landing without a parachute? That just sounds crazy. Yet in 2012, Connery jumped from a helicopter and, with a special wingsuit, landed safely in a pile of <laughs> Let me see this. over 730 meters below. Luke Aikens. Many of you wow. know that think skydiving is crazy to begin with. After all, who wants to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Luke Aikens took that to a whole new level of insanity. The 42-year-old has made a lot of jumps, but recently he made the news by jumping without a parachute on purpose. With viewers watching nervously, Aikens fell over 7,500 meters before landing in a giant net. With that, he became the first skydiver to jump without a parachute and land. What? Felix Baumgartner. When you talk about speed and breaking the sound barrier, most of the time you're referring to a rocket or a jet. In 2012, Daredevil Felix Baumgartner demonstrated that you don't need any sort of vehicle to break the speed limit. Just yourself and good old gravity. Okay, and maybe a special balloon to take you up into the stratosphere. From nearly This is getting more intense and more intense. This is the kind of shit that I used to get high and sit at home as a teenager and watch and watch and watch and watch. It is so interesting. It's so amazing. But it's not 10 people who instantly regretted their decisions. Nine kilometers Look at that! Is that a real photo? Is that a real photo? <laughs> Don't- is that a real fucking photo? If that's a real photo, that's- that's incredible. ...stream free fell and reached a speed of Mach 1.25. That's Photoshop, surely. I'm ...becoming the first person to break the sound barrier without the aid of a vehicle. Wow. Alan Eustache. You might not think <laughs> to see him, but this computer scientist and one-time senior vice president at Google likes to push himself to the limit. Two years ago, after Felix Baumgartner made his jump, Eustache secretly performed his. Although he didn't have any cameras watching, the 57-year-old set a few records. At over 41 kilometers in altitude, he went the highest and fell the furthest of any jumper. He's also no slouch for speed, as he was reported going well over Mach 1 during his descent. He jumped? from a balloon 40 kilometers in the air when normally a skydiver will do three kilometers in the air. What? Look at his fucking space suit. How is there any gravity up there? Well, after seeing all of these daredevils, maybe it's safe that you just stay at home and watch some more amazing content that we have for you here at The Richest. Leave <laughs> us a comment on this video and hey, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks and bye-bye. Look, man, that was a terrible video, a terrible title, but I will give you credit in that I am quite intrigued. Quite intrigued. The 10 rarest dog breeds that walk on Earth, 10 biggest celebrity transformations, 10 strange things happening in the world right now, 11 crazy things people actually did so PewDiePie can beat T-Series. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, then, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do 10 strange things happening in the world right now because that is current and uh, I just hope that the title is not misleading. So I'll see you back here soon. Like the video if you've liked it, subscribe for more, but don't subscribe for them. Peace out.